going to try to get through this packet um, in uh, oh an hour and 15 minutes hopefully so uh, this is summer work packet for MPH I don't know what MPH is something high school uh, math classes students going into geometry so this is really a opportunity to be proficient in algebra one and I like this. this is a really good um, worksheet there are uh, 53 problems so let's get it uh, show all work do not round any answers totally agree with that right answers as a fraction if the decimal is repeating or the calculator does not show the whole decimal uh, that's good understanding what calculators will give you uh, and knowing the errors of utilizing a calculator. Evaluate each expression, find the answer, and show your work. Remember, order of operations. Now, see, I wouldn't have given you this hint. This is a little bit too, too much information. But uh, we're going to simplify, and we're going to do uh, 40 minus 20. We're going to do this part of the problem first. We're going to do negative 3 times 5. That's not 3 times 5, that's negative 3 times 5, which gives us negative 15 over 5 plus 3 times the quantity. And I'm going to also simplify this. I can do that because I know my orders of operations. I know that I can simplify these things first. That's negative 4 quantity squared. Now, I'm going to do a couple other things. I'm going to do this operation first. And I can also do that exponent. So I can be efficient in my work. Minus 20 minus 15 is 5 over 5 plus 3. The quantity of negative 4 squared is 16. And now I can again do two steps at once. I can do this division. And I can do this multiplication at the same time. So this gives me 40 minus 1 plus, oh, what's 3 times 16 is something like 48. And now I'm going to do 40 minus 1, which is 39 plus 48, which gives me a lovely 87. You should know orders of operations by the end of 7th grade. And then really knowing it in eighth grade. Uh, evaluate each expression. So we have this expression 2 times quantity a minus c over b plus 4 where I'm going to substitute these values in for it. So wherever I see an a I'm going to substitute a 6. Wherever I see b I'm going to substitute a negative 2. And wherever I see c I'm going to substitute an 8. So now we plug it back in, 2 times the quantity 6 minus my C value divided by my B value plus 4. I'm going to do 6 minus 8, which is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4, which is positive 2. Technically, I'm going to cancel those and get negative 2. That's efficiency. I don't have to multiply 2 times negative 2 and then divide it by 2. That would be very inefficient. Five times. So we're going to translate into algebra five times a certain number. Five times x is half a different number. So one half a different number, which would be a different variable. Uh, you could have written a really nice way of writing this is that. Woo! I like that. That's nice and technical. Uh, we're going to combine... Uh, we have to find common denominators. 9 and 5 is 45. One easy way to find a common denominator is just multiply the two numbers. But a more efficient way would be the least common denominator. Least common denominator is also 45. Now off to the side, we're going to write equivalencies. Um, I'm going to do it one way in this problem, and then I will do it a different way in the next problem. So... We can do 9 times 5 is 45, so we multiply the denominator and numerator. Uh, 5 times 9 is 45, so 4 times 9 is 36. So those are the equivalency. 35 minus 36 leaves us with negative 1 45th. 
And then with number five, uh, first of all, I'm going to convert it to an improper fraction. So I'm going to make two and five eighths. I'm going to convert that eight times two is 16 plus five is 21 eighths. Again, I look at the denominators, five and eight. I know that the common denominator is 40. It is also the least common denominator. And now I'm going to do a quick division. I'm going to do an eyeball. Five goes into 40 eight times, and then I do six times eight, which is 48. Eight goes into 40 five times. Five times 21 is 105. So that's how we can be very efficient at finding equivalent fractions. That's how I do it. Then you add those two together, you get 153 over 40. You can leave it as an improper fraction. There's nothing improper about an improper fraction. I sure as heck wouldn't turn it into a decimal. Uh, this is division, so we know that there is no division with fractions, or at least not a fun, convenient way. In order to do division, we convert it to multiplication by taking the reciprocal of the right term. And now, before I do any multiplication, I'm going to simplify when I can. I'm always going to simplify before multiplying. Now I have 4 times 1 and 3 times 1, so I get 4 over 3. Again, I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction. We have multiplication. I, again, am going to reduce. Uh, I can't do any more, so I have 1 times 3. I have 1 times 3 and 7 times 2. And that's going to get, or negative 1 times 3, which is, hello, negative 3 over 14. If you simplify before, you don't have to simplify at the end. Oh. Simplify each expression. We have like terms. Like terms have the same variable to the same exponent. These both are c to the 1. So we are going to combine their coefficients. Coefficient is negative 6 and negative 3. So my answer is 7b minus 9c. 7b minus 9c. This is in standard form, alphabetical order. And uh, our constants go last. Whenever we multiply like bases, they have the same base. And we're multiplying, we are going to add their exponents. So this becomes n to the 10th. Whenever we divide like bases, we are going to subtract their exponents. Multiplication is addition, sub division is subtraction. You get c to the 10th. Whenever you have coefficients, coefficients we're going to treat different than like bases. So like bases, I'm going to deal with that differently. It is very much like we see 12 over 4 times a to the 6 over a. 12 over 4 is going to reduce to 3. Constants are treated differently. And then variables, since we're dividing, we are going to subtract. So we get 3a to the 5th. Uh, solve each equation. So this is just a nice... We're going to add 3x. We're going to get our variables on the same side. And then we are going to isolate. And we get x equals 7 ninths. If we're going to check it, that means we take our original problem and we substitute the value for x in both of the x. We're going to substitute and we're going to simplify. We're not going to move things left and right. We're just going to simplify this left side and simplify the right side. I'm going to cancel. That's 2 and that's 3 because 3 goes into both of those. That gives me 14 thirds. I simplified the left side. Now I'm going to simplify the right side. I again can cancel because 3 goes into both of those. That becomes negative 7 thirds plus 7. And now I have to still simplify this right side, so I need a common denominator. 
7 is equivalent to 21 thirds. And negative 7 plus 21 is positive 14 thirds. So I know that x equals 7 ninths is correct. I know that my value is correct. Uh, I'm going to do a high school thing. I'm going to get rid of that term outside of my parentheses. Yes, you know who just entered. Hi, Hi Chewy. That simplifies to negative 2h equals 3h plus 5. Chewbacca's gone now. We're going to subtract. We're going to move my variables to the same side. Negative 5h equals 5. Divide both sides by negative 5. h equals negative 1. And now I'm going to check by taking my original equation and substituting the value in for h. We say it's negative 1. Oh, I almost made a mistake. 3 times negative 1 plus 5. We're going to simplify the left side and start simplifying the right side. We just bring down the left side until we simplify the right side completely. Once the left side and the right side are simplified, does it make a true statement? Yes. That means my answer of h equals negative 1 is correct. Oh, this is a nice one. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, negative 6 equals y. That's nice and easy. 18 equals negative 3y. We're going to substitute the value in for y and simplify both sides. And my answer is correct. Uh, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 5 because negative 5 is in the denominator. What's going to cancel a negative 5 in the denominator? A negative 5 in the numerator. And that leaves us with x equals negative 40. Let's check it. Plug in negative 40 for x. The right side is already simplified. Let's simplify the left side. And we get 8 equals x. 8 equals 8, which means my solution is correct. Uh, we again, we're going to get rid of that 2 in the denominator by multiplying by 2. That leaves us with 2x minus 8 equals 10. We'll add 8. 2x equals 18. Divide by 2. x equals 9. Let's check it. 2x minus 8 over 2 equals 5. 2 times 9 minus 8 over 2 equals 5. 18 minus 8 over 2 equals 5. And even though I know the answer is correct, I'm going to continue and write out all of these steps. I'm going to write them all out. I'm going to show all of my work, even at the extent, even at the expense of time, which is really not that much time. It's not that time consuming. Just take an extra 10 seconds to write it all down so you can go back when you do make a mistake. We're going to get our variables. I always move variables first. When you have variables on both sides, then I'm going to move the constants. And now I'm dividing. And when I get really good at this, I can move relatively fast. So I'm saving time by being uh, familiar with the work by moving and doing efficient work and knowing what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug in 4 for x on both of the sides. 24 minus 9 equals 14. And even though 24 minus 9, uh-oh, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Because 4 plus 11 is not 14. So notice that... When I do make a mistake, I can find it, and I didn't just disregard it and just go, oh, let's go on to the next problem. I checked my work, and because I wrote out all the steps, I can find that mistake relatively quickly and easily, and I don't waste time. You thought I made that mistake on purpose? Nope. That was a earnest mistake. Number 18, 
Uh, we will not divide. There is no quick way. We're going to distribute. This is going to be really the only way, not the only, but the more efficient way. When we multiply negative 5 times 3 and negative 5 times negative x, we get negative 15 plus 5x. So just showed that step. That is, that doesn't necessarily, you don't have to show that, but I just want you to know how I got those values. We're going to move the variable first. Negative 15 plus 2x equals 1. Let's add 15. Divide by 2. X equals 8. Negative 5 times the quantity 3 minus X equals 3. X plus 1. Let's put our 8 in there. 3 minus 8 equals 3 times 8 plus 1. That's negative 5. That's 24 plus 1. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 24 plus 1 is 25. And that took 20 seconds, 30 seconds to check. So that check is not that debilitating to your time. Let's simplify first and then solve for the variable or isolate the variable. And we get x is greater than 5. So I show where 0 is. I show where 5 is. I do an open circle, and my solutions are greater than. So that's how I would graph the inequality. Again, they give you a little bit too many uh, hints and remembers. I'm not a big fan of the remember part. Uh, you should know. Multiply both sides by negative 2. When we multiply both sides by negative 2, by a negative, multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, we're going to flip the inequality sign, and we get x is greater than negative 6. There's 0. Here's negative 6. Open circle going to the right. That's an important idea that you need to understand why we flip the inequality sign. Not many teachers teach you the why. They just tell you to do it, and you go, oh, well, I'm just... We're supposed to flip it when there's an any when we multiply both sides by a negative. Well, you should know why. And that reason is because you're moving it across the inequality. If you don't know what I mean, then you might want to watch some of my videos on inequalities. They're for a low, low price today, discounted free. Now, why didn't I flip the inequality because it was a negative because I didn't divide both sides by a negative. I just divided, uh, I, I divided both sides by a positive. So I'm not, I don't need to. It's when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative. So open circle and this time it's less than, so it'll go to the left. 22, same thing. We got a two step equation. 3n is greater than or equal to negative 9 divided by 3. n is greater than or equal to negative 3. Here's my 0. Here's my negative 3. This time it's going to be a closed circle going to the right. Because of the equal sign, we include the boundary. We include the solution. I love graphing. This is in slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept. The slope is always going to be the coefficient of x. The y-intercept is going to be the constant. So in this example, the slope is negative 2. The y-intercept is 3. And when we graph, we're going to graph the y-intercept first. And then we're going to use the slope. The slope equals negative 2, which is negative 2 over 1 is a fraction. Now slope is rise overrun, or when you rise, you can go up, down. When you run, you can go right, left. So negative 2 is down 2, and positive 1 is right 1. So from my y-intercept, I'm going to go down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, and now I have my graph. I have, those are all the solutions for that equation. 
nice, efficient way. You might want to ask your teachers, what do I have to label? Do I have to label the X and Y intercepts? Do I have to label the points? Some teachers have you label each of the points. Do I have to write the equation on the line? Some teachers say to label your line, negative 2x plus 3. Uh, some teachers want two points. Some teachers want four points. So how many points do I have to graph on my line? The more things, the busier it gets, the noisier it is. All right, we have an inequality. So we still are going to use the slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. I have to figure out, I have to pay attention to whether I'm going to include my boundary or not. It has an equal sign. So I am going to my points. These points on the slope and the y-intercept are going to be boundary points, y-intercept of negative 3. So because I'm including, I can use a closed circle. My slope is 2, which is up to right 1, up to right 1. I can make a solid line because it's an equal sign. And now, these points on this line are true. They're solutions because it says equal. But one of these sides, I have to shade. I don't know which side is the true side at the moment. So I'm going to take a test point. That test point is going to be 0, 0, just because it's the easiest. So I'm going to plug in x and y into this equation. So I use this equation, and I plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. And I'm going to simplify it. 0 is 0 less than or equal to negative 3. And I ask that statement. Is this statement true or false? That is a false statement. So I know the point 0, 0 is false. This point right here is a false point. And what we know about this boundary is that every point on this side is false. But I don't shade the false. I shade the true. So I'm going to shade this side. Remember, I held this line. This line was a solid line because it was true. So it will look like that example. Um, so hopefully that made sense to you. Uh, find the slope. Slope, again, is rise over run. It's, some people will tell you it's the difference of y's over the difference of x's. Y's because we rise. You go up, down. That's on the y-axis. Run is left, right. That's on the x-axis. That's why we can associate it. And the formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It's the difference of y's over the difference of x's. So if we call this point 1, this would be x sub 1, y sub 1. If this is point 2, this would be x sub 2, y sub 2. So we take y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Ooh, minus a negative. That's where most students will make their mistake here. So we get negative 5 over positive 5, which equals negative 1, and that's my slope is negative 1. The mistake most students will make is they will associate this negative with the 3 as the negative in the problem. But it says x sub 2 minus the x sub 1 value. So that would give me 2 minus my negative 3. All right, uh, find the x and y intercept. Well, this is in standard form. So ax plus by equals c. And when I want to find the x-intercept, I know that all x-intercepts have a y value of 0. So if I take this equation and I plug in 0 for y, it cancels out this value right here. And notice you're just left with 6x equals 12. And then you solve for it. And you get x equals... 2, which is my x-intercept, because I plugged in 0, 
and I got two. So two comma zero, two for X, zero for Y. And that gives me two, zero, two on the X, zero, gives me that point. If I wanna find my Y intercept, I know that all Y intercepts have an X value of zero. So if I take this equation again, but this time I plug in zero for X, notice what happens to that term. It goes away and it leaves you with negative four Y equals 12. Divide by negative four, we get Y equals negative three. So I plugged in zero and I got negative three and that is a Y intercept. So I go to zero, negative three, and I make a dot. I now have two points. I can graph that equation based upon that. But there are some other things that it says in this, find the slope of the line through the points, write the equation in slope intercept form. Okay, well, I did it a little bit different, but we're gonna find the slope. It is up one, two, three, and right two. So the slope, equals up to right, excuse me, up three, up three, right two. Up is positive, right is positive, so this is my slope. So if I was gonna write it in slope intercept form, that's my slope and my intercept is negative three. So the equation would be y equals three halves x minus three. So Using that information, I can find the slope, and I already had one of the intercepts. Actually, I have both the intercepts. Uh, now we're dealing with polynomials. We're gonna simplify polynomials. This says to add, um, and I typically just write this out, 3x squared plus 4x minus 5xy minus 7x squared plus 6x minus 5xy. If we distribute this positive one into everything, everything multiplied by positive one doesn't change its values. And now I'm gonna look for like terms. I have three X squared and negative seven X squared. I have four X and six X. And then I have negative five X, Y that, yeah, I guess I can do that. I kinda of wanna do it in a different color. Negative five X, Y and negative 5xy. When we have like terms, we are going to combine their coefficients. Let's do blue for blue. So we look at their coefficients, we combine them. Three and negative seven makes negative four, makes negative four x squared. We're just combining their coefficients. If we're gonna combine their coefficients, we have a positive four and a positive six. That makes positive 10x. We have a, we'll use that color, a negative five and a negative five, which makes a negative 10xy. And that would be our answer. Fun. Polynomials are fun. All right, uh, again, this is not going to change any of the values inside the parentheses. This negative will when I distribute it into the, these parentheses. So I have five Y to the third minus three Y plus four. The positive doesn't change anything in that parenthesis. This negative will change all the values. So instead of positive nine Y squared, it becomes negative nine Y squared. Instead of negative six, it's positive six. Instead of positive two y to the third, it's negative two y to the third. Now I can do a number of things. I can put all of these in standard form before I, and I'm just going along looking for like, like terms. And I'm underlining to know that I've already written it. And now I'm looking for the second. So plus two y squared, any other seconds? Yep, negative nine y squared. No more seconds. I have to the y minus three y. I have positive six y. And then I have positive four and I have positive six. So this is a nice way of not missing anything, having 
all of the like terms, we have these three. We're going to look at their coefficients. We have 5, negative 4, negative 2, which makes negative 1 y to the third. Then we have these two like terms. We're going to combine their coefficients, which is negative 7. And then we're going to look at these like terms, and we're going to look at the coefficient, and that's plus 3y. And last but not least, we have our constants, which gives us 10. So we should end up with negative y to the third minus 7y squared plus 3y plus 10. We're on track. We're doing well. It's 215. We're on problem number 29. My arm hurts. All right, when we multiply polynomials, we combine their coefficients, negative, we're going to multiply their coefficients, and then if they have like bases, we multiply those. So in actuality, we have negative 2 times 3 times x to the 7th times x to the 4th. So constants are treated differently, and like bases, when we multiply, we add their exponents. So negative 6 to the 11th. Really important to be proficient at that. That is going to be a big Algebra 2 thing. Same thing here. We're going to deal with the constants. We're going to deal with the like bases and the like bases and the like bases. So we again go in actuality, we have 12 over 2 times x to the third over x to the fifth times y to the fourth over y to the fourth times z to the fifth over z squared. So this produces 6. This is x to the 3 minus 5 because we're dividing. y to the 4 minus 4 because we're dividing. z to the 5 minus 2 because we're dividing. 6 x to the negative 2, y to the 0, z to the third. So we would simplify anything to the zero power is one. So one of your answers, well, one of your answers could be this. And now if they only want positive exponents, it would be 6z to the third over x to the second. When we change the sign of the exponent, we change its location. It's currently in the numerator. And notice when I put in the denominator, it changed the sign of the exponent. So big key idea right there. Uh, foiling, multiplying, first, outer, inner, lasts. So first times first, that's F first, which is X times X. Outers, these are the outside ones. Outside, outer, two T's, don't know. So outside is going to be x times 5. Inner, inside, insides are these two, the inside ones. And we're going to multiply oh, negative 7 times x. And then lasts. These are the lasts. So it's the last of the binomials, negative 7 times 5. So that's why it's called foil, first, outer, inner, last. Mr. Mack likes to show it, and I'll show it in the next one. Let me see if there's a next one. Let me see if I can show you the double distribution. Yes, I will. So this is one way of doing it. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. We still have like terms on our Outer and inner tend to be like terms. x squared minus 2x minus 35 is its simplification, its standard form. You have x to the second is always going to come before x, and that would be your answer. We can't simplify anything else. So I'll show you Mr. Mack's technique. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to distribute it into both of these terms. You have y times y plus y times 8. And then I'm going to distribute again. I'm going to distribute the second term, negative 8, 
into both of these terms. Negative 8 times y, negative 8 times 8. So this gives us y squared plus 8y minus 8y minus 64. Simplifies to y squared minus 64 because my outside and inside are opposite of each other. They are opposite because this example are, is an example of conjugates. You should know conjugates and what they look like. Very important at this stage of your math career. We will double distribute. We have 2x times 3x plus 2x times negative 4 plus 5 times 3x plus 5 times negative 4. That's how I'm going to do it. 6x squared minus 8x plus 15x minus 20. These are like terms. 6x squared plus 7x minus 20. And you should be able to do it that fast. That's what you're shooting for. You practice these all the time. Factoring. I'm not going to go into factoring. You can watch a video on it, but I will show you what I do. Um, this is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where 1 is your a value, negative 10 is your b value, and 24 is your c value. I'm going to use the a times c technique. a is 1, c is 24. I'm going to multiply those two, and then I'm going to find factors of 24. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Now, I know if this sign is positive, that means the signs are the same. They're either both positive or both negative. In order to find out, I go here, and this tells me that the signs are both negative. So negative, negative, I'm going to make these factor pairs negatives, and then I'm going to combine them. That makes negative 25. This is negative 14, negative 11, and negative 10. I'm going to look at these numbers and see which one is equal to my middle value, negative 10, right here, negative 10. So I'm going to, sorry, negative 10. I'm going to use these two values, negative 4 and these factor pairs. Uh, I kind of want this to be less... I'm going to do it this way. This is my middle value. This is my middle value. So I'm going to change my middle from negative 10. So x squared, instead of writing negative 10, I'm going to write negative 4x and negative 6x. Because negative 4x and negative 6x makes my negative 10x. So I haven't changed the expression. All I did was break it from three terms to four terms. Now I'm going to do something called factor by grouping. I'm going to group the first two and the second two. And now I'm going to look at this factor by grouping. What common factor? They have an x. I'll factor it out and I get x minus 4. I'm going to factor by grouping. What does this have? This is first term negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative 6. And if I factor out a negative 6, I get x minus 4. I know I did it right when these two are the same. If those aren't the same, then I did it incorrectly. And uh, since they both have it, I'm going to go trick-or-treating. I'm going to take that candy bar from both of those. And if I take it, it leaves me with x minus 6. That's how I get this. This is what I factored out. And that is how you factor. Now, it seems somewhat time-consuming, but if you get really efficient, you should be able to do it. Now, I am going to recognize that this is the difference of squares. The characteristics of difference of squares is two terms. It's subtraction between the two. And both terms are perfect squares. So x squared is a perfect square, 81 is a perfect square, so I know that they create, they make conjugates. And conjugates are opposites. So 
I know that it's going to be x minus 9, x plus 9. I just take the square root of both of them and I put and I make conjugates, the plus and the minus. Because notice that that will cancel out, my outside and inside will cancel out the middle term. And we notice that there are two terms. When we have two terms in subtraction, I'm checking to see if it's difference of squares. This is three terms, not difference of squares, because it has a middle. So I'm going to do a times c. a equals 1, c in this case is negative 20. Factors of 20 are 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 3, no, 4 and 5. This time, when my sign is negative, I know my signs are different. It's the only way you can get a negative. And then I'll look here and I'll say my bigger is going to get that sign. So if my factor pair is 1 and 20, the bigger one gets the negative. And since the signs are different, that means that has to be positive. 10 is bigger than 2, so that gets the negative. And the other one must be different signs. 5 is bigger, so the signs are different. Notice positive 1 times negative 20 still gets me back to my negative 20 factors. This is negative 19, negative 8, negative 1. Which one's equal to my middle? Negative 8. So I'm going to use these two factor pairs as my coefficients for my middle. I'm going to rewrite my middle and I'm going to change it from three terms to four terms. So x squared, instead of writing negative 8, I'm going to write negative 8x. I'm going to write positive 2x minus 10x. Negative, positive 2x minus 10x gets me back to my negative 8x minus 20. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to group the first two and second two. What can I factor out of the first two? An x. What can I factor out of the last two? A negative 10. They must be, if the first term is negative, you have to factor out a negative. Did I do it correctly? Yeah, because I have x plus 2 in both of the quantities. So I take out the x plus 2, and if I remove that, what's left is x minus 10. And guess what? I just factored that polynomial. That is, in a nutshell, factoring. Uh, here we go. So I'm going to try a times c. 1 times 36 is 36. Factors of 36 are 1 and 36. 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 5 no, 6 and 6. Signs are the same and they're both positive. This makes 37, this makes 20, this makes 15, this makes 13, this makes 12. Which one's equal to my middle? 13. This is equal to my middle, so I'll use these two terms, those two coefficients, plus 4x plus 9x plus 36. Factor by grouping. Factor out an x, you get x plus 4. Factor out a 9, you get x plus 4. My answer is x plus 4, x plus 9. That's how fast you can do that. Some of you will get even good enough to do it in your head. Uh, but when a is not 1, when the coefficient of x squared is greater than 1, this a times c helps you tremendously. All right, number 38. Yeah, you can come in, but hopefully you're not asking me a question. You're asking me a question? Um, can we use your wallet? Uh, as long as you're not loud. I'm doing a video that you're now on. Okay. Hi, okay. good luck. Uh, so we are going to factor. We are going to use the zero property of multiplication, meaning when you multiply two things that equals zero, one of these boxes must be equal to zero. One of those has to be equal to zero. That's the only way you get zero when multiplying. So this is addition and subtraction, so I need to factor this to turn it into a product of something. So on the left side, we will do our a times c, a times c, a is 1, c is 8, factors of 8 are 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Signs are the same, both are positive, 
So positive, 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 positive. This gives me nine, this gives me six. Which one's equal to my middle? Six is equal to my middle, so I'll split it up using those two coefficients. X squared plus two X plus four X plus eight equals zero. Factor by grouping, factor by grouping. Factor out an X, you get X plus two. Factor out a four, you get X plus two. This gives us X plus two times the quantity X plus four equals zero. So, okay. So that means we have two boxes. So what value for X would make this the box that was zero? Well, technically, we ask this question and we say, oh, minus two, minus two. Oh, when X is negative two, that would make this box equal to zero. Or this box might be equal to zero. So we solve for X. Oh, when X is negative four, it would make this box equal to zero. So I write a solution set, and whenever we write solutions in solution sets, we put them in numerical order. So it's negative four, two are the two values that go into that. We'll do this again. So I'm gonna use A times C, and A is one, C is negative four, negative four, factors of negative four, one and four, two and two. Signs are different, and the bigger is negative. So bigger is negative, signs are different. Bigger is negative, signs are different. Mr. Mac, two is the same, it doesn't matter. We get negative three, we get zero. Which one's equal to my middle? Negative three, so we'll use those two terms. X squared plus X minus four X minus four equals zero. Factor by grouping. This has an X, that gives us X plus one. This has negative four, X plus one. And we get X plus one, X minus four equals zero. We turned it into the product. We can now use the zero property of multiplication. And we're gonna set each one of these quantities, each of these binomials equal to zero. And then we solve. So when X is negative one, it makes that left binomial zero. X equals four and so my solutions are negative one and four. Still moving right along. We are booking it, as that girl says. Bigger numbers, okay, A times C. A is one, C is 50. Factors of 50, one and 50, two and 25, five and 10, and that's it. Signs are the same, both are negative. So negative, 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 negative 51, negative 27, negative 15. My, my middle is negative 15, let's use those two terms x squared minus 5x minus 10x plus 50 equals zero. Group, group, factor out an x, x minus five, factor out a negative 10, x minus five equals zero. We factor out the x minus five because both of them have it and that leaves us with x minus 10 set each one equal to zero, x minus five equals zero, x minus 10 equals zero. Add five, add 10, and my solution set shows that the answers, and if we plugged in both of those, either of those into the original problem, you're gonna get the left side equals the right side. So that's how you check is you just plug in that value. So nothing changes. You're doing very, very similar things to when we have linear equations. Uh, let's do this. A times C, one times negative 12, negative 12, factors are 12, one and 12, two and six, three and four. Signs are different. I look here, if this is negative, I know they're different. I'm not talking about this sign and this sign. I'm not comparing those signs. 
I'm just looking at this sign and when it's negative I know it's different and I know that the bigger is positive positive and they're different so this gives me 11 4 1 coefficient is 1 so I know I'm going to use negative 3 and 4 x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Let's group the first two, group the second two. We get x, x minus 3. We factor out a 4. We get x minus 3, x minus 3, x plus 4 equals 0. Some of you are already knowing. You can look at it and you know what the solution is going to be. And you'll get good at this when you do it a bazillion times. X equals 3. There's another mile down. Mr. Mac, you're making a video. How are you getting miles on your watch? Hey, I'm just pacing while I do this video. I'm just walking back and forth left and right. I just walked a mile left and right. No, uh, my watch is possessed. All right. Solved by graphing substitution or elimination method. So we get to choose from e any of them. And this is an important thing. It's an important skill to know which one of those you should do. Since I have a variable that is isolated in terms of another, I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to substitute into that equation. So I'm going to take this equation and substitute it into there. So instead of writing y, I'm going to write 3x minus 1 plus x equals 5. And the beauty of that is in both of these equations we have two variables. But in this new equation we only have one variable. And if we have one variable we are now able to isolate. So I'm going to distribute. Whoa! Distribute 6x minus 2. When you distribute you have to distribute to both terms in the parentheses. And now we're going to Simplify before moving. Like terms on the same side make 7. We're going to add 2. Now we can start moving things and isolating. x equals 1. Now the solution to a system is not one value. A system is a coordinate plane. These are two linear, these are two lines. And we want to know where do they intersect? So it's going to be an x, y value. That is the system, the solution to a system tells me which one. So, okay, I found the x. Now I can use either of these equations. I'm going to use, because I'm looking for my y, I have my x. So I'm going to substitute 1 in for my x. I'm pretty sure it was positive 1, yep. And then this will tell me that when x is 1, y is equal to 2. So that is going to be my solution. 1 comma 2 is the solution to the system. Now, if you check, that means it needs to be true for both equations. So both equations, so it needs to be true, meaning it is a point on, and they both share that point. So technically, both of these equations should work out. 2y plus x equals 5 when y equals 2 and x equals 1. Yes, that's a horrible 5. So this is my checking. I have to check both equations. Checking 1 does not acknowledge that it's a solution for both. But I checked both. Yes, it worked. And here we go again. This is set up for substitution again. And the reason being, I have one variable that is isolated. And it's isolated in terms of the other. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug the, the I'm going to actually plug the blue in for the x. So instead of saying x, I'm going to write its value, 3 plus y minus 7y equals 45. I'm going to simplify. I'm going to start isolating. Negative 6y equals 42. Divide by negative 6 and we get y 
equals negative seven. So again, we have it's the y value. This is set up nicely to just use this other equation and we know y equals negative seven. So x is gonna equal negative four. So I take my x, which is negative four, and my y, which is negative seven. That would be the solution to the system. That is a point on both of the lines that they share. That is a solution for both equation, equations. Uh, on this one, we're gonna use uh, elimination. Now we can't eliminate, well we could subtract. I don't like subtraction, I like addition. And we're going to eliminate, but we want to cancel out one of the variables. We have 5x and positive 5x. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if that bottom 5x was negative? Well, if we write an equivalent equation by multiplying everything by negative one, so we get negative 5x minus 4y equals negative 11. That's an equivalent equation. And then I'll just bring this equation. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to rewrite it. And now I'm going to add. That's the elimination. We are eliminating a variable. And then we add those. That's negative 2y. And this is 2. Let's divide by negative 2. And we get y equals negative 1. Hey! Nice, and now I'm gonna pick one of those equations. Let's take that top equation, and we're gonna substitute the y value, and we're gonna simplify. And x equals three, and then we're gonna write it as a coordinate. My coordinate is always x comma y, so make sure that you are putting the x value in the x location of a coordinate and the y in the y location of the coordinate. Did I skip one? I did. All right, I love radicals. So we have perfect squares. Perfect squares are the square root of one, square root of four, square root of nine, square root of 16, square root of 25, square root of 36, square root of 49, square root of 64, square root of 81, square root of 100, etc. And you should kind of know up to 20. And we notice that the square root of 32 is not a perfect square. It's between square root of 36 and square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 36 is 6. So this value is equal to approximately somewhere between 5 and 6. If we do it on a calculator, no decimal equivalents, so if we do square root 32, 32 square root, we see we get an irrational. It's irrational because this number does not repeat. It looks like 4, 2, 4, 2. It looks like 4, 9 starts repeating. It doesn't, and it never stops. It keeps going. It looks like it stops at 8, but this calculator can only go to that many place values. So we are not going to do an approximation. We are going to simplify. So how do you simplify radicals? Well, you look for perfect square factors. Find factors that are perfect squares. So 32. Well, you want to know what? I can break 32 into 16 and 2. Why did I pick 16? Because it's a perfect square. So I am able to separate radicals that are being multiplied. And the square root of 16 is a perfect square, so I can write that as 4 rad 2. So square root of 32 simplifies to 4 rad 2. 2 is a prime number, cannot be simplified. Such an important practice to, and we only had one problem in that. So um, that's unfortunate. You should really practice more. Um, these are both perfect squares. Square root of 64 is 8. Square root of 16 is 4. And then we simplify. That is a really easy, nice, super fun problem. All right. This says minus rad 20 minus rad 80. And radicals are like variables. If we have 4x plus 2x, that equals 6x. So if you have 4 rad 2 plus 2 rad 2, that equals 6 rad 2. So we just are combining their coefficients. Coefficient, 
coefficient, coefficient. They're like terms because they have the same radical. Very similar to this and this. Make this, keeping in mind that they have the same that. Now these are unlike, these are not like radicals, but can I simplify rad 80? Ooh, what can I break rad 80 up to? Well, my perfect squares, can I find a number that is a perfect square, is, is a factor of one of these? Uh, let's do, ooh, let's do this. I think I can do that. Let's copy. Uh, let's paste it on this page. That's not a bad thing. Those are perfect squares. And we can show that we like those. No, let's do this. Square root of 16, square root of 64. Those are perfect squares. And let's do this. So let's look at this. How much time I got? I got 15 minutes. Got a couple more problems. So uh, 80. Okay, 80 is not a perfect square, but is there one of these numbers, is one of these a perfect square? Is it a factor? Does one, well, one doesn't really help. Oh, four goes into 80. Ooh, I can do that. Okay, so I can break, I can break rad 22. Ooh, did I, oh, I didn't even simplify that. That was bad. Uh, I can break rad 80 into four times 20. Everybody see that? Four times 20 is 80. So we get rad 20 minus, and let's separate these. And rad four is a perfect square. So that's minus two rad 20. So now they are like terms. I have one rad 20 minus two rad 20. So we combine their coefficients. So we take one, oh, that was ugly. Maybe not use yellow, Mr. Mac. <laughs> we can use one and negative two makes negative one, negative, negative, one rad 20. Now I would never write negative one. We would write it as negative rad 20. But this needs to be simplified. Mr. Mac, don't forget to simplify all radicals. I'm going to break 20 into four times five. And why did I pick that? Because rad four is a perfect square. So my final answer is actually negative two rad five. Boom, baby. All right. Uh, here, okay, when we multiply like radicals, they don't have to be like terms, we're going to multiply the outsides with the outsides and the insides with the insides. So this really says 4 times 3 times rad 5 times rad 10. Now, much like these are outside, so these are like, that makes 12. I am not gonna multiply these to make rad 50, because what would we do? We try to break it down. And much like fractions, let's see if we can simplify. Oh, what if I broke rad 10 into rad five, rad two? Guess what rad five times rad five would be? Rad five times rad five is equal to rad five, I don't need that parenthesis, squared. And guess what happens? The square cancels with the square root, and we're left with five because this makes rad 25, and we wouldn't do that because that's too time consuming. We're making it bigger when we should understand this concept. So this rad five times rad five, the five comes out, and we get 60 rad two as our final answer. Uh, this is why I love radicals. Radicals are so much fun. All right, next concept that I'm gonna <laughs> that I'm going to teach you about radicals in a matter of seconds is when radicals are being divided, we can put them in the same house. So I can simplify by doing that. Since 18 and 24 were not perfect squares, I can put them in the same radical and then reduce it. And then I can go back and put them in their, their own house and then rad four and that's how we get that. How do you like that? That's a nice, really efficient way of simplifying radicals and fractions. And then what's wrong with this answer? What's wrong is you can't have radicals in the denominator as your final answer. 
So I have to find an equivalent. I'm going to multiply it by some value of 1. So whatever it is, it has to be the same in the numerator and denominator. So riddle me this back, kids. What's going to get rid of a rad 2? Another rad 2. Because rad 2 times rad 2 equals 2. It comes out of the house. And then we have 8 times rad 3 times rad 2, which is 8 rad 6. And notice the 8 and the 2 are on the outside. So 8 over 2 times rad 6, we can simplify that to 4 rad 6. That's called rationalizing. You are rationalizing, rationalizing your denominators, your radicals. All right, what is 30% of 210? So uh, what is 30% of 210? Well, that's easy, right? So we can think about that. We can also think about 30%. What's 10%? 10% would be 21. And then if we have three 21s, that's going to be 63. Yeah. We can do that nice and easy. That's one way, or we can just multiply those two. Uh, what 18 is what percent of 45? Let's divide by 45, divide by 45. 18 over 45 reduces to 2 fifths. And 2 fifths, we should know, is equal to 0 0.4. You should know that without a calculator. Now, this is not a percent. This is a decimal, but it asks for the percent. So 0 0.4 is equivalent to 40%. So my answer is 40%. All we should be doing in logic. We should be using our logic and understanding. Let's not make this any harder Whoa. than it needs to be. 16.8 is... 28% of what number? Let's divide by 0 0.28. Divide by 0 0.28. I'm going to move that decimal point two places to get the decimal away. That means I have to move it two places. That's 1680 over 28 equals my x. I'm going to take half of 1680. Half of 1680 is 840. Half of 28 is 14. I can still reduce it. Half of 840 is 420. Half of 14 is 7. And now I see, ah, 7 and 42. So that's equals 60. And I find my answer. No calculators. None needed at all. Utilize it. Use your brain. Have good math sense, number sense. Fluency, all those things, all those things come with practice. Awesome job. Maybe an hour video. Have fun. Good luck.